So welcome. It's great um, to have you all here today. Uh, myself and Hina um, are thrilled. Unfortunately, Hina's having, as you know, technical difficulties, um, but hopefully she can join later on, and if not, um, in, in the chat channel uh, later on today. Um, so ideally, we would love to be presenting this in Brno, um, in that beautiful city that I got to visit um, last year. Um, but unfortunately, that's not the case um, this year, but um, fingers crossed next year, we'll, we'll get back there. Um, so yeah, so the topic we're, we're going to talk about today is um, I very much uh, around what you're, you're probably experiencing yourselves in your own kind of teams, uh, whether you're working Scrum, whether you're working Kanban or a customized uh, uh, process for your team. It's trying to adapt that into a remote setting it can be quite challenging. Um, and myself and Hina um, have kind of captured a few tips along the way over the last kind of couple of years, and especially in the last 12 months that we were hoping to share with you and um, to um, hopefully help you uh, unblock any things or any challenges that you might have, uh, you might be experiencing um, at this time. I'm sure you have lots of tips yourselves around things that are working for you. Um, so it'd be great to hear those as well. You can add them to the chat as we kind of go through the presentation. Um, or as I said, we can have a chat about it later on. So we'd love to, to hear from yourselves as well in, in what's working for you and, and what's not. So remote, working remotely can look very different uh, for, for people. Um, so it could mean, you know, that you're working in a city that has, um, has an office, but you've decided to work uh, remotely. That's a, a personal choice for you. Or it might be um, that you're, you're working in a location um, and all your other colleagues are working in different locations across the globe as well. Um, so re remote can be quite different for lots of different, um, lots of different people. Um, if anyone uh, knows of how we can all work remotely from this gorgeous island uh, with Wi-Fi, please let us know. Um, I'll be on a plane tomorrow. <laughs> So let's just um, jump back a little bit and I can introduce myself um, a bit more. So my name is Sarah Finn. I'm a senior Agile practitioner um, at, at Red Hat um, under the Agile practice team. And what that means really is that I help um, teams kind of come together to have discussions around how best to work together um, and to try and ask them to experiment with um, Agile techniques and tools um, to allow them to evolve more and continuously improve. So it's just really around creating that space and having someone there supporting you in finding um, a better way of working that you enjoy um, and also that, that's delivering value um, for your users as well. I'm currently working with the Community Platform Engineering team. Um, they're um, at the forefront of the support for the CentOS and Fedora communities. And they're an absolute amazing bunch. I love every day. I just absolutely love working with them. Uh, great crack and uh, really, really uh, brilliant, brilliant uh, skills and, and uh, uh, work ethic as well. They're amazing. Um, and in my spare time, um, I help out with the Agile and DevOps community in Red Hat too. So again, creating kind of safe spaces um, for teams within Red Hat and reps from teams to join the Agile and DevOps. Um, community to share what their experiences have been and um, what they're trying out, what experiments they're trying um, and learning from others as well. So it's, it's a pretty cool place to be um, and we have great fun in doing it. I'll introduce Hina. Um, Hina is my amazing colleague um, that I absolutely am mad about. She's, she's great. Um, I'm sure lots of you have, uh, have experience working with Hina. She's been around had a long time. Um, and she is a principal uh, agile practitioner and she's working with RHB and CNB team. Unfortunately, I actually don't know what that breakdown is, but um, you, know, you might in the chat pop that in there. Um, so Hina has helped uh, put all these slides together with me um, and uh, she's, uh, she's, she's absolutely brilliant, she's great. Okay, so if you're not um, familiar uh, with Scrum, uh, within a working environment. The first vision that might come to you is maybe a scrum team in a rugby setting. Um, so rugby is a sport uh, that's played kind of across, across the world, but it's very popular um, in the UK, Ireland, um, New Zealand. They're like the top team 
uh, South Africa and uh, lots of other lots of other places as well. Um, but Scrum is is a part of, of play within rugby. Um, so if um, if a ball goes out of play or there's been a foul um, and you need to restart play, they do that through using a Scrum technique. So both teams come together on either side and a ball, a, a rugby ball is popped into the into the middle and each team need to work together as one unit to try and um, get that ball, uh, uh, get that ball for their advantage. So they're working towards that one goal, that one vision to um, gain that ball to achieve their advantage and hopefully score um, a winning try or a, or a point. When we look at um, Scrum in a work environment, it's usually referring to one of the most popular agile frameworks um, that organizations adopt and teams adopt to help them work. So when the uh, Scrum framework guides and rules were drafted, people generally worked in co-located environment with very few, if any, employees working remotely. A Scrum team will generally look like this, all team members co-located with an actual physical scrum board to visualize, gather around and interact with. Going mad with stickies. <laughs> uh, the scrum guide uh, regarding ceremonies works really well um, in this environment. So it provides opportunities to regularly sync with your team, to plan, to touch base, to keep track on progress, to review, gain feedback, to reflect and improve. So it works really well in, in that environment. Most, if not all, teams found these enjoyable meetings. Um, when you're in a co-located environment, you might go off into um, a meeting room for four hours for your planning session. But a lot of that was a social aspect of that too, um, where you had your kind of general kind of chit-chat conversations. The scrum master might bring in some sweets or donuts or whatever it might be. So it was a real kind of event that was happening and something that people look forward to. And everyone left those um, ceremonies with uh, a clear understanding of next steps, their action items, and feelings of achievement for their collective effort was delivered to their users. They also enjoyed the opportunity to gain and provide feedback to ensure they delivered an item of value and to address any pain points with their process. So they really valued those things together. They really saw um, their purpose um, and how it helped them achieve success and also um, and allow them to kind of feel connection with uh, with the team and, and the overall goal, overall goal. But with all good in the world, it might seem like it was, but only hiring talent to work at one location. Were teams and organizations limiting their potential? Yes, they, they kind of were only, only hiring someone from, from one location. Were they missing key skills or the opportunity to learn key skills from others? Absolutely. And were they truly delivering the best product or service to their users? Maybe they absolutely could have had that skill and talent within their one location, but they definitely missed out on other opportunities to, live in, to deliver even more value. So teams and organizations started to see the gap, the potential to learn grow and prosper, to explore new markets, new skills, was too big of an opportunity to ignore. When online tools emerged to help with connection, communication and planning, the opportunity to deliver more value grew even more and more. So today, and maybe, you know, it could be just through COVID, but all across the globe, this is what a scrum team looks like. We're all on our um, Google uh, Hangouts, our Blue Jeans, or Zoom, whatever, whatever tool you use, and we're all coming together in this Brady Bunch um, window to, to, to collaborate together. So we still have our vision, we still have our goals, our plans, and in theory, the only thing that we've changed is swapping out in-person discussions, physical visual boards, um, co-located desks to online tools that enable us to work together. And in fairness, there's perks to that too. We get to work in our cozy work pants some days. We have a constant stream of coffee. And just to keep us on our toes, we have the unpredictability of interruptions. <laughs> but as we've all experienced, it has never been as straightforward as that. So say for example, 
planning for a two week sprint in a co-located room for four hours with plenty of breaks. Having a chat um, is one thing and trying to replicate that online to achieve the same valuable outcome of alignment and shared understanding while engaging remotely with your team is something different altogether. Okay, and over to you, Hina. Hi, I didn't want to chime in until you recognized I was here. <laughs> um, Brilliant to have you here. So um, as we see, there are plenty of remote challenges and this is one of them. Um, just a quick introduction. My name is Hina. I work at Red Hat and I'm an Agile practitioner. So now this was the perfect way to enter into this presentation because we pulled a bunch of people and we asked them, hey, tell us what is challenging when working in remote settings. And there were so many common patterns across the board. One, if you work for a globally distributed company, ah, an echo, hold on one second. How about now? Less echo? Okay, I think less echo. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, if you work for a globally distributed company, then there is um, the time zone challenge, right? You can work with people that are in India and in California. And what happens is maybe you have one to two hours a day you can meet and that's it. So all of the meetings that you needed to do as a team, as a program, et cetera, they're jammed into this golden hour and you will constantly be busy. The others are the beauty of meeting Tetris. As you go into the setting, you have so many meetings, right? You want to schedule meetings. So for example, if I wanted to just chat with my colleague, the level of effort it'll take me to find a meeting, find a time that I'll fit with more than two colleagues, it is like playing a game of Tetris, but you're not playing a game of Tetris at the bottom. You're playing a game of Tetris when you've got about four lines left and you have to go and get the shapes that you need just so it can decrease. Last, uh, one of the last and most challenging things I believe is meeting fatigue. We're human beings. We cannot be sitting behind our computer for six, seven, eight hours a day, even after three or four hours. You're not meant to be staring at a screen and it's exhausting. So if you feel tired by the end of the day and the benefit of feeling tired by the end of the day and being in meetings is you also feel like you didn't accomplish anything. Meetings are work. You're tired from meeting fatigue and you also probably are beating yourself up because you didn't get to, you know, getting that PR in making that presentation, testing or verifying that BZ because you had meetings all day. Um, the fatigue is real. And last but not least, the value of all of this. It's hard to see the value of the work you're doing when you're sitting behind a screen, you have maybe cards on Jira, uh, Bugzilla's, Trello cards, it doesn't matter, some kind of tracking tool or to-do list but you're very focused on your individual item. It's not the same when you're in an office and you can see pictures on the wall, you can see whiteboards with diagrams, hear what your colleagues are talking about. Your walls are not gonna tell you what the strategy of your PRs are. Your walls are not gonna tell you what the customer solution that you're working on to solve is. So that being said, it's really difficult in a remote setting unless you go out of your way or you build it into your system to see the value of the work that you're doing. That doesn't negate that there's value. It just means that it's really tough to see it. So let's talk a little bit more on the next slide. Scrum can be your friend. And I, as a agile practitioner, people that I have worked with that didn't really like Scrum in the beginning, they gave us some of their own insights. Um, I like to call him the beetle of containers, Dan Walsh. He uh, highlighted that Scrum helped coordinate and collaborate between distributed teams, helped force people to keep on track and focus on what the team needed to succeed. 
And also Steve Milner, or some of you might know him as Ash Crow, made a fantastic point that there's no such thing as the perfect process. So we're not here to tell you that Scrum is the best. In a remote setting, use Scrum. Absolutely not. But Agile and Scrum helped get people closer to the ideal because it's an iterative approach where you're supposed to experiment. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the next few slides. So how can we uh, help your teams? How can you help your teams address this? Well, first, um, and there might be a little bit lag. So you wanna focus on the best ways to collaborate and deliver. What does that mean, right? Those are buzzwords. Really, if you wanna focus on that, you're looking at what you're doing today. And there's no secret here. You're just saying, all right, so how are we working? You'll figure out the gaps as you go because when you're clenching your jaw doing something, and it's not just clenching your jaw because it's an instant, there's repetitive patterns that stress you out that make you think, oh, why are we doing this again? Why are we in the meeting again? Why am I wasting my time? As you have those reactions, if your brain hurts, if your body is tensing, listen. So you're looking at it and you're listening and you're ask yourself, why am I tensing up? What is, what is the reason for this? It might be because you don't find value in the way you're doing things. And there might be an easier way that you haven't talked about. And so the next step is then saying, hey, every time we have these standups or every time we have this sprint planning, it's a waste of my time. There's extreme merit in saying that. It's If it's a waste of your time, it might be a waste of the rest of the team's time. But the idea of process stops them. The idea of, oh, we agreed to do Scrum, we're a Scrum team, so we can't change it. This is how Scrum does things. That stops you from actually saying, I don't care what Scrum says. Scrum is there to help us. So if it's not helping us, let's talk about it and figure out a way to change it. And so that's where your response goes. Will you actually find something that will fix the problem? No. But if you experiment, eventually you'll find something that's better or you'll just have to agree, this is painful. Either we keep doing it because the value is worth it or we stop because it's a waste of our time. I think that's a really good, really good point there, um, Hina, and especially around that listening side of things. So let's not just accept, I suppose, the status quo or this is how Scrum should be run, even though I'm sitting here, you know, clenching or my brain is fried or I'm not seeing the value in meetings. It's to question, you know, things that we need to change and um, to hopefully um, improve things and also to improve our, our joy working together as well. So thanks for sharing that. All right, um, so I unfortunately did not hear Sarah. Uh, oh, actually it's because I tried to avoid an echo. Remote challenges will come and be a repeated pattern in this talk today. So first, one of the worst connotations with Scrum is that there are too many meetings. And there's truth in that, right? Because you're not just having your team Scrum ceremonies, you're having program meetings, design meetings, cabals, one-on-ones, one-on-ones with your manager, and you can't tell your manager, hey manager, I'm so tired of having meetings. You're the one I don't wanna to talk to this week. So no, don't do that. Definitely meet with your manager. They're there to help you progress. But their meetings, they, they do tie people up in one place. They are gonna leave someone out in remote teams. For example, your colleagues should not sacrifice dinner time with their family. You should not have to take a four o'clock in the morning meeting every day, right? If there's purpose and value and you agree and it's maybe like a quarterly thing, that, that's different. But if it's a scrum ceremony or a repetitive meeting, your colleagues, they can sit this one out, right? <clears throat> so if you're going to have those meetings, you want to And so there's a, that question you ask is, what is the value of having this meeting? What's the purpose of it? Why are we doing this? And is it leaving us in a place that's better to collaborate and do the work that we set out to do, right? So what are our tips here? By the way, those were very wise words from Brian Stinson on the left. 
feel free to take some time and read these. We'll tweet these out, the slides. So first, have your meetings with purpose. I actually recommend all of you at the end of DevConf, take a look at your calendars and rank your meetings. You can prioritize them or color it green, color it yellow, whatever makes you feel good and see what meetings you find value out of. Determine if, hey, the meeting is not valuable. Can I async this? Why are we having a meeting in the first place? Is it too much that we're doing? And if the answer is yes, bring that to your team. Your team should be there to listen. They should be there to say, yeah, we actually don't find the value, or maybe you weren't aware of certain value that the meeting was bringing. So that conversation is really important, and it's okay to have those conversations because you should trust each other to have that safe space. Then prioritize your scrum meetings. The ones that you're doing, the ones that you're saying, hey, this is how we're doing it, this is the intention of the meeting, uh, we understand and we know that this is gonna help us, show up there. That might mean, hey, I can't make it, my team has backlog grooming or uh, refinement. Or hey, we have, um, I don't even wanna say daily because we're gonna tell you, you might not have to do daily standups uh, in a few slides. So maybe it's like our weekly video standup. I can't make this meeting. That's okay and that's very much recommended because you've committed to your team and you know that the way that you're working together is going to help you meet your goals. That There's a difference than not showing up once in a while because maybe you had to go to the dentist, maybe you really did have to jump into another meeting, but if it's a regular occurrence, then it, you're not gonna have value in these meetings at all. Additionally, for the meetings where everyone doesn't need to attend, we all love our program meetings, we all love our design discussions, we all love, the one, we all love this open decision, the open uh, model, but you don't always need to be there every step of the way. You should be aware. So send someone to go ahead and represent you, have that awareness, and whatever information you missed, that representative will share that back to you, or there will be an email, one of our favorites, summary, to tell you what you missed. So if you think that there's too many of us, why do we need this, let's say as a uh, virtualization team? Why does the entire virtualization team need to show up to this meeting? Maybe they don't. And then ask someone, you can even ask a rotating someone to show up and be the voice of the team and then come back. So the devil's advocate to this one is, meetings can be your friend. There's a prerequisite, which is clean up your meeting calendars. Only make sure that there's value in your calendar because you're, you're, this is what your job is, right? Your eight hours, hopefully less, if more, let's carve it out to less. That is time that you're getting paid for or you're dedicating. So clean up your calendars and then make meetings your friend. It is more effective to have a meeting and talk instead of writing comments in an issue tracker. If I were in DevConf in a room with you all, this is the time where I would ask how many people have had a conversation that solved a problem when they've had maybe comments in Bugzilla floating around for three weeks, a month, sometimes six months because you forgot the issue existed. And I'm sure at least a fourth of you, I want to say at least half of you, have had those kinds of interactions or comments on JIRA. Half of the time, those comments, those Bugzilla comments, those threads, those emails end up in a 15 minute meeting anyway. Um, but it is the easiest trap to get into that comment. And when you're in time zones, right? I'm talking to my colleague in India, so I have to wait every day for one line responses. Just figure it out in a 15 minute meeting or a five minute Google Hangout. Ping them, say, hey, let's jump on a call and just chat real quick instead of waiting for the responses. Um, you can you can change your stand-up sometimes to have conversations, and that way you have an open place to talk about firefighting, to talk about strategy, design issues. And um, additionally, sometimes your walls, they're not always your friends. If they're speaking back to you, it's probably because you need some human interaction. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? So my wall is gray. How is your day? Its response is always gray. <laughs> When the conversation changes, I know I should go to the grocery store or I should call a friend because I need other interaction. And it's okay to have time to just ask people how they're doing. You'll find out that your colleagues are fun, cool, they have cool hobbies. You might find out that one of your colleagues has made all of the furniture in his house because he's also a master carpenter. You won't know that if your meetings are just, what did you do yesterday? What are you planning on doing today? And do you have any barriers? So if you don't have the space to have the, that kind of fun, make some fun. All right, and I actually love, yeah, she um, love uh, oh, sorry, there's an echo there. I love um, the point that Tamash raised in regards to sparkle. I'm definitely gonna use that word from now on. Um, you know, to kind of, it, look forward to catching up with your teammates like to find out you know how things are going what box set they're they're looking at at the moment what book they're reading um you know how their kids are how their family are i think it's so important um to keep that connection going so i'm definitely gonna gonna start um asking people to add in a little bit of sparkle into their their daily stand-ups all right and the next slide Remote participation. This is going to be short and sweet. Your process in a remote environment and really any environment is only as successful as the people who choose to adopt it. So what's a tip here? Because, right, you're going to work regardless. Sit down, have a team working agreement or just something that lists out. Here's how we're going to meet. Here's how we're going to interact. Don't make it an essay. Don't make it pages. People will not read that, let alone myself. Make it easy. Document the workflow, meaning a few boxes and like pictures, that's great. Nothing extreme because you really want these things to be available for let's say a 10 year old to be able to consume and understand. It's supposed to be easy, not difficult. And then you're often asking for thumbs up for agreement, you know, please act this, please let me know if this is good. But maybe change that conversation and say, is anyone opposed to this? Because most people don't care, right? I'm not gonna lie, as an Agile practitioner, most people don't care how you wanna have stand-ups or how you wanna do this. They're actually just like, just tell me what to do. I'll do that so I can go back to what I'm having fun with. So ask people, does anyone have a thumbs down on any part of this process? Do you not wanna have stand-ups this way? And those thumbs down, they will help you facilitate conversations with the people that didn't want to participate in the process. There's nothing wrong with having a thumbs down. The hard part is we never really ask that question. We just ask, did you agree to this? And it's not comfortable to say, I don't like this. I mean, eventually it might become comfortable after learning a lot of resilience and having trust and safety, but especially in the beginning as your team is trying to work together, ask for those thumbs down in a clear visual way. Don't make people speak in the meeting because that's uncomfortable. Uh, pictures, tools, emoji downs, that will help you. All right, I think I'm handing it over to you, Sarah, to talk about some tips for scrum ceremonies. Brilliant, thanks for that, Hina. Um, and I actually only recently started using the thumbs down, if anyone on my team is, is on here today. Um, because like that, there's value, you know, in the in the things that people don't want to agree with. What are the items there? What are the reasons why? And, and to try and address those. Um, so thanks so much for sharing that tip with me. OK, so let's jump into um, Scrum ceremonies. So these are really the cornerstone of, of Scrum um, and the, the ceremonies that are in the guide to allow a team to collaborate, to give feedback. Um, to work together, to progress, um, and so on. Um, so really, these are the, the, the pieces um, that, would, uh, that would kind of keep a, um, a Scrum team in, in their cycle and ensure that they're engaging with each other. Okay, so let's look at um, backlog refinement. And the purpose of a meeting is always, um, always really important to know when you're going into something, what am I hoping to gain from it? Am I, what, I, what am I hoping to contribute? What will I, 
what would be the outcome when I leave this meeting? Will this help me um, do my work, work towards that goal as a team? So it's really important that you know the purpose and ensure that you're gaining value through every uh, meeting that you attend, not necessarily just scrum meetings, but every meeting that you attend. So the purpose of backlog refinement is to design, define, and understand future work that the team is prioritizing in the next three to six months. So if a feature is coming down the line, over the next three to six months, you really want to scope out that feature. What are the important elements? What are the pieces that will deliver value to our end users? And ensure that that is in your backlog. You're continually bringing the team in to review it, to prioritize what are the must-haves, what are the should-haves, the nice-to-haves, and um, to allow them for when the team are ready to work on it, they have that information in place and that will allow them to release the value sooner rather than later. So common issues with this. In a traditional setting, co-located environment, you have whiteboards, uh, traditional whiteboards to work on, um, to bring a team in to collaborate together, uh, to move stickies from one place to another, to really kind of um, engage and interact with each other and also the, um, the, the boards. And most of the team watches one or two people filling out user stories as well. So sometimes backlog refinement can become um, uh, an activity that we see the product owner, maybe the tech lead, and um, maybe the scrum master kind of filling out that, that back, backlog. So how can we address that? How can we get a little bit more connection and engagement? So if we divide work of pre-filling stories to the entire team, so they don't rely on product owners and tech leads. So create um, a, a, a point in your, in your cycle, in your uh, sprint um, cycle to do backlog refinement and invite the team in to um, add their own tickets and their own tasks that they need to uh, work on to achieve uh, that, that feature or that valuable item that contributes to that feature. So share that ownership and share that responsibility. Tools are your friend and will help with collaboration. So trying to, um, for teams to see the bigger picture um, is quite challenging when it's online. So for them to see the overarching goal and how their work feeds into that can be quite challenging. So using a Miro mural board, JIRA, uh, anything at all that will help with that shared understanding will definitely help the team uh, pad out that backlog. So more engagement, more um, explorative questions, less blockers. Um, going into sprint planning and into your sprint ends up um, with delivering a better solution. Okay, moving swiftly on to sprint planning. So I'm just conscious of time here, but we will share the deck afterwards and myself and Hina will join the room to have um, more of a discussion. Um, so sprint planning, so the purpose is to align and agree to the work that the team will complete in the next sprint cycle. And the common issues, again, we could see the, the Scrum Master, the tech lead, the product owner pulling things um, into, the, into the sprint. So it becomes just um, the team not engaging, not seeing the, the value of their contribution. So how can you address? You use your tool to queue up the next sprint and share with the team ahead of the sprint planning meeting. So that they can review it, they can see uh, what needs to be done and if they have any questions that need further clarity at the planning session. So the planning session becomes more of a, a valuable discussion around the goals, gaining clarity and negotiating on commitments. Negotiating being the key word there. <laughs> um, the daily stand up. Again, it doesn't have to be daily. It just needs to be what your, your team are comfortable with in regards to check-in, what makes sense for the project and where it's at as well. So common issues, finding a time slot uh, to meet daily can be challenging. And people not paying attention until their name is called. So really stepping away and um, having those silo pieces of work, not feeling the overall connection. And I think John really summarizes it here on, on how we could get better engagement. So having team members tag each other versus the scrum master call on people. So again, you're waiting for your name. You don't know when that's going to come. And um, so you're going to be more engaged. You're going to listen more to the overall uh, catch up and, and um, progress report. So mix between async standups um, and create a chat channel. If there's an overflow of conversations that you can uh, have, a, have a chat with your team. Okay. Um, and then the sprint review, probably one of the most important. Let's take time to review all of that great work we've done, celebrate as a team, and gain feedback from our users and our stakeholders. 
So sometimes people aren't sure what is worth sharing. So I've worked um, over the last two weeks, but I, you might feel as a team, there's nothing that we can actually show. Um, and so you might shy away from doing a sprint review. Whereas what we've experienced, myself and Hina have chatted about, um, is there's always you know, work to showcase and, and maybe not to necessarily show uh, in tangible terms, but to, to, to share a story on, to share that journey, to share the, the, the trials and tribulations and the value that you have delivered by getting through that and um, uh, getting that over the line. So maybe use an agenda, ask team members to volunteer ahead of time uh, to add to topics there. Hello, folks. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, we are out of the time, unfortunately. Uh, so maybe last few comments and uh, we will move the discussion into the Discord, OK? Perfect. Thanks for that, Lenka. So yeah, we were just going to go through um, our sprint retro. You can have a look at these and myself and, and Hina will chat, can chat afterwards. Um, and then we just, our last slide is just around um, some watch outs. So just to ensure that, you know, we're, we're not creating silos that we're actively reaching out to connect um, in fun ways to, to do that. Um, so thanks so much for your, for your time today. We really appreciate it. Um, and reach out at, at any point, even after, after DevConf, um, if you have any questions or would like some more support.